Hey kids, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about birth control and about a lot of misconceptions that are kind of being had over it with this whole court case with the Supreme Court about businesses not being made to cover your birth control and stuff. So, and what brought this on is a friend of mine on Facebook. She posted this thing that was an infograph about why insurances should cover birth control or why they should be made to cover birth control. And she put no, and she said that, and, and let me read this to you so I can get this right. She said, no, insurance should not cover birth control. There should be no birth control period. If insurance covers it, then the number of users will increase even more. Just let me, I'll get to that. If that's the case, then they should cover condoms, which would be completely ridiculous. I'll get to that too. If you want, if you don't want a baby, don't have sex. I will also get to that. Birth control defies the natures of sex. Okay, let me just say that I respect your religion and I respect your religious views, and I get it. Okay, but people need to stop using religion as an excuse to not be educated about what birth control is used for. Sure, birth control is used for sex. That's true. It's very, very true. But birth control is also used for a number of other things. It's used to control hormones during your period. It's used to help with cramps. It's used to help with the heaviness of your cycle and as well as um, as many clots as you have during your cycle. It's used to combat P PMDD, which if you don't know what that is, look it up on Wikipedia because it's a it's like a PMS related disorder. One of my friends has it, not the same friend who's writing this on Facebook. And it's also used by people with bleeding, bleeding disorders to help combat some of their symptoms and to help them deal with their disorder. That's what I primarily use birth control for, or at least what I, my intentions were. And also to kind of make my period suck less because my period consists of excruciating cramps and migraines to where I literally cannot leave the house. And birth control helps to combat that. So, I mean, it's not that hard if you just do a little bit of research to see that some people use that for non-sexual related things, you know. Um, my birth control is free. I have two insurances due to uh, a mandated law that has my biological father make sure that I have insurance until I'm over the age of 22, I think. I have, to, I have to look at the specifics. And then my mom has insurance for me through my work, just like as a backup insurance. So my birth control is free, if not it'd be $10. My, the only prescription I have to pay for is my ciproheptadine, which is my headache medication, which is anywhere from 10 to $20. Um, so a lot of people may think, well, that's, that's wrong. You're paying for a medication to, that allows you to have sex and all this stuff. And it totally, like, that just means that you're going to have sex all the time, blah, 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 blah. There's a really funny commercial about that, actually, talking about why your what your boss thinks about you having to pay for your birth control at work. Like, you're having sex all the time, and he's paying for you to have sex and blah, 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 blah. I've already covered that. Some people don't use birth control for sex. And the people who do, at least they're being smart. And you know what? You don't need insurance to pay for condoms. Just go to a health center. They'll give you them for free. It's not that hard. Your doctor's office will give them to you for free. You don't need health insurance to cover condoms. Birth control, though, that's another option because your doctor has to actually prescribe that to you. And if it's a prescription medication, well, then why shouldn't insurance cover it? Just saying. Oh, and uh, finally... Um, Yeah, if insurance cover and and I'll get to the thing about how if insurance covers it, the more people will use it. Well, yeah, you just heard my premise about how people use it for something other than having sex. I know a very good friend of mine. She uses birth control for PMDD, and she's been she's got like a million things wrong with her. This poor soul, and she also has PMDD. And literally, when we were in high school, she had to take the whole week off when she got her period. I feel so bad for her. 
and I just, as a woman, I just, I just, when that week came, I got her some Ben and Jerry's or some chocolate. I was on the phone with some DVDs, like, hey man, I love you, let's do this, I'm sorry you're in a lot of pain, do you need anything? But her birth control was kind of expensive, and her mom didn't make a lot of money, and so the stuff that was helping her to combat these symptoms, she wasn't able to necessarily afford, and so she needed her insurance to pick up the rest of what her mother couldn't afford. So when insurance doesn't cover birth control, well guess what? That means that people of low income families can't get the necessary medication that they need if they have these type of disorders, including also hormonal disorders, because that's also what birth control can help you with, is if you have a hormonal imbalance. <sighs> okay, so there's that. Alright, and what was the other thing that I needed to cover? Um, oh yeah, so uh, if you don't want a baby, don't have sex. It defies the nature of sex. Okay, yeah, here's the thing. This is why people were having 17 children when birth control hadn't been invented. Alright, people will still have sex. By making birth control unaccessible, all you're doing is not is just not having birth control. People are still gonna have sex. I mean, seriously. Really, look look in Africa and in third world countries. We're talking about this in my ethics class right now. They don't have readily access to birth control, which means they have no population control, which attributes to some of their poverty. I'm not saying it attributes to all, so don't give me any hate speech on here. I'm not being hateful. I'm just saying this is what we're covering in my class. It is one of the reasons why there's a lot of po not population control in these countries, because they don't have readily access to birth control, or they don't know how to use it. All right, birth control doesn't defy the nature of sex. Birth control helps you to own your sexuality. It helps you to do what you're gonna do anyways and not get pregnant. I know that for people with bleeding disorders, talking to me right here, if someone were to have, a, were someone were to have sex and then get pregnant, it can be really dangerous. For people with bleeding disorders hello hemorrhaging equals death and that kind of happens which means now you got a mother or now you got a baby without a mother and so you know it helps people to take control of what they might not have control of and truthfully i'm like i'm saying i'm not hating on your religion or anything hey i'm catholic i might not be practicing catholic but i know the gist of it all i mean truthfully we live in a day and age where women, we vote, we have free speech, we're not tied down to our husbands, and we're not tied down to jobs like being a receptionist or a waitress, you know, until we get pregnant and then we can't get a job anywhere else because we have to be homemakers. We are independent women. And somebody's going to try to tell me that I can't have access to birth control just because my insurance doesn't want to pay for it, especially if I'm lower class, like lower economic class to where I can't pay for it on my own. So I'm just going to have to keep pumping out babies and not have sex at all? No. You know, it's kind of close-minded, and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry if this video doesn't really make sense. I've had a migraine all day, and I quickly check Facebook for whatever known reason, and this just kind of popped out on me, and... This, the, the person who posted this is a very educated young woman. She's a woman that I actually have a lot of respect for. But if you're going to let your views on your religious point of views, and let me tell you, this is where this is coming from. I know her. If you're going to let your religious views cloud your judgment on something and keep you from being educated on a certain topic, don't post about it on Facebook. Don't be ignorant. Research it before you have an opinion. It's not that hard. I promise you. And then, here's the beauty of it. Once you're researched, you can still have your religious views. You can still have your opinions. But then at least when somebody asks you these questions of, well, what about this and what about this, you're not going to look like an idiot when you say, oh, well, it's just wrong because my, religious te my religion tells me that. You can at least make a solid argument defending your case. Anyways, I don't mean to sound weird or hateful or weird. <laughs> I'm tired. I need to go to bed.
this was just something I was thinking about, especially since we were also just talking about female genital cutting in my ethics class. So I kind of just have this type of sexuality stuff on my mind right now. And I've been watching a lot of Lacey Green. Shout out to my to my fellow YouTuber. Um, so, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go before I sound even more stupid and before I pass out. So, I love you all. Be safe. Be educated. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do and if you do, don't name it after me. And we'll see if I post another video this week. I don't know. The mood might strike me. I might tell you all about my great lipstick hunt. If I can bring myself to swatch these lipsticks or find good lighting to swatch these lipsticks. So, alright. Like this video if you like my nonsense ramblings or just my opinionated ramblings that might not even make any sense and then I might get a whole bunch of hate comments for. Um, subscribe if you like to see more of my beautiful face and of Cal. Yes, this is Cal. He's my little baby. Hi, Cal. He's my pillow pet. I also have mini Cal. You can kind of tell that I like cows. I also have a cow trash can that you can't see. And I also have cow slippers, but the heels are kind of worn out and I can't wear them anymore until my stepdad gets his sewing machine fixed. And then he can sew new soles into my cow slippers. And then I'll show you guys them. So, yeah. Alright. So, subscribe if you like to see me in more cow. Yeah. Say hi, cow. Bye, cow. Bye. Okay. Bye.